Have you guys heard of this new indie horror game that's starting to kind of catch on? I believe it's Four Nights at Frankie's? It's pretty low-key right now, but I think it's gonna be big. How's it going guys? My name is Graham, welcome to Do Left Thumbs. In the last five to six years, Five Nights at Freddy's has maybe become one of the most recognizable franchises on the planet. References and homages to this game exist everywhere, including plenty of YouTube channels dedicated entirely to theories, fan games, FNAF, Minecraft, roleplay, Five Nights based Roblox games, and on and on. If you've ever used the internet in the last few years, you've probably seen this game or series in some way, shape, or form. There are novels and even an upcoming feature film building off of creator Scott Cawthon's wildly successful franchise. But maybe you weren't aware quite how many references there are out there at this point. And seeing the rate at which it's being adopted in indie games and other media, this video may be out of date very quickly. But I still thought it would be fun to catalog and share every FNAF easter egg secret and reference known across video games, TV shows, comic books, and more. Let's start with the one that is the most near to FNAF and therefore the most obvious starting point. Video game references. Indie developers pay tribute to one another in their games all the time. It only makes sense that they would want to reference one of the biggest franchises going. I'm going to leave out Five Night fan games that either create alternate realities with those characters or apply the gameplay to another concept. Those are too obvious. Everything about those games are a reference, so where are you going to go from there? Instead, we'll look for some of the more deeply hidden instances in completely unrelated series. One of the first I ever personally encountered came in Delta Room, Toby Fox's Undertale follow-up. Towards the end of chapter 1 in the overworld, there is an Ice Ease pizza that even uses a bear-like mascot. Toby Fox really cleverly used the chef's hat as a sort of stand-in for Freddy's typical top hat. A pizzeria with a big bear is itself a bit of a reference, but it gets a little more on the nose. To the left of this restaurant, we have our old pal Burger Pants dressed up as Ice E. When speaking to him, he drops a reference to Purple Guy from the FNAF franchise. Purple Guy. Man, that guy. You gotta... Actually, does that guy even work here? In game, he's simply referring to the purple guy to the restaurant's right, who we all know who he really means. Love You to Bits is a puzzle-filled point-and-click adventure game on mobile devices. In level 18, in the attic of the house, we can see a Freddy Fazbear sleeping among the clutter. And no, he never springs to life or, or anything like that. He just stays quietly in the background. No Delivery is an indie game from Horror and Oats, which takes place entirely in a decrepit pizza parlor so it comes as no surprise that this game would be sprinkled with plenty of FNAF references. You can fight these grey, twisted masses behind the curtains of the backstage. They're never shown very clearly, but they appear to be cobbled together pieces of endoskeletons. If you think it's a stretch, one of their skills is titled Springlock, further adding to that reference with the discontinued suit type of the Freddy franchise. This world also has its own animatronics. Instead, it is a friendly waitress who will actually heal you when talking to them and a reference that's slightly more on the nose than the others, there are various posters throughout the game that feature parody versions of these characters, such as this yellow duck with the simplified phrase, eat. Emily is Away is a free interactive story with a branching narrative themed like an early Windows operating system. If you name your character Freddy, you are given a Freddy profile picture, and when talking to Emily, you will receive a custom response. Come on down to Freddy Frazbear's Pizza! We've got food and entertainment for the whole family, and you've never seen anything quite like our animatronics. I guess if you were playing this game for the first time and your name happened to be Freddy, this would be a very confusing interaction for you. There is also a paid sequel, Emily is Away 2, with achievements that are almost entirely reference-based, one of which is titled Not Liable for Injury or Dismemberment, featuring the initials FNAF and a endoskeleton head. This is earned by entering Five Nights at Freddy's, all lowercase, no spaces, in the Unlock Icons gallery and using that secret icon in one of the chapters. In Spoopy's Jump Scare Mansion, one of the randomly spawned rooms is based on the office from FNAF, with a chair, table, fan, and phone. As a more direct reference, the phone itself will start to ring, with Spooky eventually starting to repeat hello, several uh, greetings, uh, hello, hi, so on, yes. before warnings. I don't know if you want to look directly into the fan, um, yes, hello. Um, this might be a reference to MatPat's own reaction to the fan. Oh god! Oh. It was only the fan. It's only the fan. 
He's one of the more prominent Five Nights creators on YouTube, but I could quite easily believe this reference is kind of pointing elsewhere, or maybe still at MatPat, but a different clip than the one I found. Whether joking or not, I couldn't find any other explanation that would make sense. In Endless Mode, you can also encounter the Unknown Specimen 2, alternatively named as Otto the Otter. This was implemented in the game after fans continually asked for a Freddy reference to be inserted. Instead, we got this janky animatronic. But they can still jump scare you all the same. In the Henry Stickman Flash game series, Freddy Fazbear appears in the presumed dead ending in Fleeing the Complex. During this path, you may choose to run into a small building. Inside, all the lights are off. When first entering, we hear the Torador March music, which plays as Freddy's face lights on the screen. This is the same music that's typically heard in the Five Nights 1 death screen. This counts as a fail in-game, stating, that wasn't scary. But if you leave it open for a short period of time before retrying, then a very tame version of Freddy's standard jump scare appears. You also earn the in-game medal, Spooked. While we're talking about Flash games, in Troll Face Quest, the Troll Face Quest video game edition, there is a level with Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica that pop up whenever the player shines their flashlight, resulting in failure. To beat this level, the player must change their face to a troll face, allowing you to instead scare the animatronics. Creepy Castle is a retro platforming Kickstarter success story. The game has multiple playable characters, including a few indie guest appearances from Plague Knight, Shovel Knight, Dr. Fetus, and Chica. These playable characters are all officially endorsed by their respective copyright owners and used with full permission, but I've heard some people state that Scott was actually a backer of this game and not simply a advocate of it. That's pretty cool that he chose to support something so small and lend his character to it. I'm sure that gave this game a lot of extra exposure. That's really cool. As a part of Team Fortress 2's end of the line update, there were these duck journals that were added. In the game files, users found an unused texture that featured Chica's Let's Eat bib. It has been speculated that this was abandoned to avoid further confusing players of the FNAF fanbase who often mistake this chicken animatronic for a duck. If you gave this duck a special texture that then had a Chica reference, I think that wouldn't really help that perception. But there's never been any official comment on why this was never actually used. In the free mobile game, Pixel Gun 3D, there are numerous enemies that serve as references to the core Five Nights cast. In the Pixel Gun levels, Terrifying Resort, Scary Pizzeria, and Air Area, wave 5, you have an uncommon chance of encountering Terrifying Bear, Walking Duck, Terrifying Fox, Terrifying Rabbit, and beyond these big four, you can also find Balloon Boy, as well as a few other more generic animatronic type enemies. Taking things a step further, the level Scary Pizzeria is unsurprisingly one big Freddy's Pizzeria reference. It's made to look a lot like the FNAF 2 map, with posters on the walls including Let's Eat and Let's Party quotes from the series. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth DLC Afterbirth Plus added a slew of new achievements to a game that is already bursting at the seams with achievements. One of these in particular comes from completing the game without dying five times in a row, known as a five-win streak, using different playable characters for each win. In-game, this achievement is Five Nights at Mom's, Mom being one of the primary antagonists of the game. A part of the Binding of Isaac's achievements is that earning each one unlocks something new in the game. This one unlocks Super Special Rocks, which seemingly has nothing to do with Freddy's. It may have just been randomly assigned to that achievement with no real thought there. If anyone can think of a connection of their own, please share. And probably the shortest one I have to describe because it's so simple, in Bulb Boy, a rubber bathroom duck toy version of Chica is seen in the bathroom area to the bottom left. It's about as straight up and clear of a reference as you can get. In the mall of Goosebumps the game, there is a note left behind that you can pick up from a security guard that when read is worded very similarly to the first message we received from Phone Guy in the first game. I'll let that quickly play out on its own. Uh, I wanted to record a message for you to help you get settled in on your first night. Um, I actually worked in that office before you. I'm finishing up my last week now, as a matter of fact. So... And now while leaving that transcription on screen, I'll read you out the note from Goosebumps. Hello, I wanted to jot down a quick message to help you get settled on your first night. I actually worked at the mall before you. It's my last week now. I like the way they tweaked it a bit to fit its own game, but it's still a pretty clear and cool reference. 
This one comes pretty heavily debated, but I'm convinced that it's true. In Mortal Kombat X, different fatalities have their own unique names, and the character Tremor has a brutality combo called It's Me. It's Me is kind of a recurring thing throughout the FNAF franchise. It's somewhat attributed as a Freddy catchphrase, but it really shows up all over that first game. Now that itself isn't that convincing, but we have to look at what the fatality actually is. Tremor turns the other fighter into a gold statue. Combining that with It's Me, it feels an awful lot like a subtle Golden Freddy reference. I think being that it's Mortal Kombat, they very specifically and intentionally extrapolated that reference a few layers. In Good Pizza Great Pizza, the pizza shop simulator game for mobile devices and now on PC as well, it features the ability to purchase decorations for your shop. One of these is the Celebrate style poster of the main three animatronics, titled in this game as Scary Bear Poster. In the recent remake of Resident Evil 2, you can collect 15 hidden Mr. Raccoon bobbleheads. In the Ghost Survivors DLC, you instead collect 10 golden Mr. Raccoons. One of these is located in an office on a desk that features an open pizza box, phone, desk fan, and security cameras. It could just be a generic office, but I think with the golden statue and pizza, it feels fairly intentional. And one of the latest indie horror sensations, Mr. Hop's Playhouse, has all sorts of references throughout. I did an entire video on that. There's a puzzle where you need to open the safe in-game, but if you instead enter 1987 as the code, you are treated to a withered Golden Freddy jump scare. Something that I misunderstood in my own video, but luckily the comments section were there to back me up and set the record straight. The high engagement with that video, thanks to all of your comments, actually boosted it way higher and helped it go semi-viral. So even though I heard the same explanation several hundred times, genuinely, thank you to each and every one of you. I will allow myself one fan game exception because I just love the layers of extrapolation that exist here. One of the most well-known Freddy fan projects is Johnny Chrome's two Flumpty games. In Five Nights, the clock usually rolls over into 6 a.m., while in Flumpty's, it instead rolls over to ham. When John eventually made his Riddle School finale, Riddle Transfer 2, there is a joke about this in his game. I'm fairly certain it's not 5 a.m. or 5 p.m. I guess it could be ham, though. I just love the layers of fan gamedom going on there. In my own Riddle School 1 remake fan game, bringing things full circle back to John, I included a hole in the wall referencing Flumpties. Zack says he saw a clown hiding in that hole, but I don't believe him. So no, not really a FNAF reference, just a fun series of connections I wanted to share. Moving somewhat of a step removed from direct video game references, I want to next look at Steam as a distribution platform and ways they've laced in references. Seeing as how the series gained popularity on Steam and is mostly sold through there, it makes sense that Valve would pay homage to one of their crowning indie titles. Five Nights characters have been featured in several Steam events. Steam Summer 2017 featured a sticker book, where pages were completed by collecting and combining different sticker sets. Here we can see on one of the stickers, Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica featured in the prize booth of this mini golf course. Again, a few years later, during the Spring Cleaning 2019 event, Steam had a bunch of daily tasks themed around playing through your backlog of games. As per usual, there are wallpapers and emojis to be unlocked. One of the wallpapers features Freddy's head on top of the refrigerator. We kind of have a nice stepping stone progression here. And through that, I want to next look at YouTube. Seeing as how wildly popular the game is on YouTube, and a large part of its success being due to its exposure from prominent creators like Markiplier, it makes sense that YouTube would pay the fandom back. In YouTube Rewind Now Watch Me 2015, there is a Five Nights at Freddy's scene starring Markiplier. There is a scene transition using the Torador March music, and I can't share more than that of the audio because of the copyrighted song that is used for the rest of the scene, but we see people huddled up in a spooky pizza joint with appearances from Chica and Freddy at the end of that segment. This next one is kind of difficult to explain, but the Adult Swim YouTube channel features a one-off parody of Let's Play YouTubers set somewhere in the Rick and Morty universe. Glorp de Blorp, a PewDiePie parody, plays 10 Tuesdays at Tinkles on some sort of YouTube equivalent. There's much more parody going on here, just about YouTube in general, the comments and streaming. The gameplay of checking cameras and flicking lights is entirely from FNAF. 
Something I never knew existed and never thought needed to exist is the Chuck E. Cheese YouTube channel. In 2018, they uploaded a short Halloween at Pizza Time Theater animated special. This is all kinds of weird, but is fun enough for kids and features several key references. There is a night shift security guard named Fred who works five nights a week. Name's Fred. I'm the night watchman. A stage show that features creepy, out-of-service animatronic animals, including some sort of Elvis bear, a hippo, and Madam Oink, who seems to be the only named one, with Madam Oink appearing when the light is flicked on and off. There is also a security office filled with cameras and the same vertically opening doors we're familiar with. I'm lumping this next one in, even though it was actually on Twitter, it's still social media and YouTube-esque. Whatever. It's my video. I made the rules, so I'm, I'm gonna bend them here. In November 2016, Arby's tweeted out a cardboard craft version of Freddy's head along with, Good job, sport. See you next week. Many were quick to point out that old sport would have been a lot better. Maybe it kind of shows that they didn't really know what they were doing or have anything in mind with this. It was a cool little craft, but they never really followed up on it or did anything with this. Seems like whoever's in charge of their social media was just having fun. Then, three years later, they made a Halloween video that parodied the Five Nights style cameras, instead scanning around a nighttime Arby's. This ends with a Freddy's jump scare. Again, this was coming pretty late to the game and felt a little forced. I like the effort that went into it, but I'm pretty sure kids could easily sniff out how hollow of an attempted attention grab from some corporate stooge that this was. Instead, I'd like to give credit to Denny's, who actually made something much less cringy and much more subtle with a one-off Tumblr post. It simply asked, do you have exotic butters? I love the fact that that could be so easily overlooked. You're actually targeting the fans with something like that. So if we are crowning fast food Five Nights social media winners, which I guess, yes, we are doing that, I'm giving the win to Denny's. Video games, Steam, and YouTube all kind of feel like they exist within a very specific bubble. There are references that spill out beyond that. We even now have a couple Five Nights references on TV. One I need to get out of the way as it's one of the most commonly cited TV references is in Gravity Falls Season 2 Episode 5, Seuss and the Real Girl. They visit a pizza chain, who has animal pizza-matronic jamboree. The chain shows up a few more times in the season, but this episode is the most prominent featuring. This pizzeria has their own troupe of terrifying red-eyed animatronic performers, including who ha the Owl, Will E. Badger, Beaver Cheerleader, Big Beaver, Cowboy Frog, and Rat in a Barrel. But this needs to be clarified, this episode actually aired in September 2014, meaning that it would have been written close to a year before that far before Five Nights' original August 2014 release date. It takes a long time to map out a story, get everything recorded, storyboard it, and then animate it. So even though it was released after the game, it would have been made far before. The Gravity Falls crew says that the Rock of Fire Explosion animatronic band that plays in showbiz pizza chains was instead their inspiration. The timing of this being about a month after the first game is pure coincidence. In Season 2, Episode 46 of The Loud House, Titled The Crying Dame, Lily the Baby is given a toy from the attic to help her stop crying. This little red singing toy looks a lot like a red animatronic fox we know, and while Foxy doesn't usually hold a microphone, they may have just been mismashing character designs a little so it was a little less on the nose. The parents in the episode at one point even comment on the toy's demonic nature. Oh, it's cute now, but you'll see! You'll all see! We've never had a direct confirmation from the creators. At this point, there are so many animatronics out there that any sort of robotic singing animal is going to draw comparisons, but it seems pretty likely. The creators of Glitch Techs have teased that they have some sort of FNAF-based episode in the works. It's unclear if it'll be a parody of the lore, characters, or concept, but it will be interesting to see what they do with it in their upcoming batch of episodes. Moving up from the living room screen to the big screen, there's been a long in development Five Nights movie. That's an official one. I'm pretty excited by the fact that they're clearly taking their time with it. Let's hope that lives up to the hype. The current Five Nights references in movies aren't really in major blockbusters. The first is in the horror comedy film Bloodfest. The animatronic band's Celebrate poster is briefly seen in the background as these two characters are talking. One of them is Jacob Batalon, who people probably know from the Spider-Man series. 
there is also the 2018 short Hulu horror film, The Hug. This has some undeniable similarities to Freddy's. It's a pizzeria with a bear type animatronic, Pandori, that eats children. It's pretty hard for anything to make a story about a pizzeria or any sort of haunted slash demonic animatronics without those comparisons being made. There's a chance that they were just going for a showbiz parody, same as Gravity Falls, but having a story like this coming out years after Five Nights means they had to at least be aware of the similarities. There we've covered pretty well all the biggest forms of media, I'm going a little bit more peripheral now. Freddy and other Five Nights characters have shown up in several comics. There's less to set up or explain for each of these, they're mainstream comics, magazines, or other prints that slipped in small cameos. In the Steven Universe comic, issue 5, the plush toys of Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica appear briefly in this panel. In the September 2017 issue of Mad Magazine, there is a Charlie Brown Halloween parody comic, and in one panel, there is a paper plate style cartoon mask of Golden Freddy seen hanging in the background. In the French comic, The Legendaries Parodia, from page 14, Freddy Fazbear's doll is seen as a brief cameo. And in the Brazilian comic, Monica Teen, in the 99th edition, The Haunted Park, is filled with Five Nights references. Mainly a park filled with hostile animatronics, there are several generic ones in the Five Nights style that are even featured on the cover and appearing throughout, and in this one panel of the comic, one of the many animatronics bears a striking resemblance to Chica. These are all of the more mainstream comic appearances, similar to how I had to look past FNAF fan games if I started including every fan fiction and webcomic, both FNAF based or not, we might be here all damn day. And finally, probably our weirdest category is merchandise. And no, I don't mean any literal official FNAF merch, that wouldn't really count as a reference. Same rules as before, that would just be a, a thing that is a Five Nights thing. There are only two that I know of that exist in this reference capacity. Wacky Packages is a series of trading cards that parodies consumer products. Wacky Packages has been around for 53 years, and in 2017 they featured a card of Freddy's glow-in-the-dark spinning bow tie. Some of the tags on the box exclaim, at malls everywhere, and an endorsement of Guaranteed for Five Nights from Foxy. This is less of a parody of a specific product, as is usually the case for wacky packages, and instead just seemingly a generic reference to the old electronic spinning bow ties that would have been sold at old-timey gag shops. And finally, at the end of the video, here is one that I'm almost ashamed to share, but there was a series of parody toys called The Hangries that I guess just pooped out slime. I'm not sure why this exists, or who would want it. But one of the characters of Series 1 was a Freddy-like bear named Five Nights of Farts. For some reason the character is named after the game and not the character, and that's just barely a pun? <sighs> I think we're done here. Thank you, Hangry's toy line. I think you ruined it. It's not fun anymore. There's no longer any need to make any future references, parodies, or easter eggs. This idiotic toy line ruined it for everyone forever. I'm sorry. As of right now, these are all of the existing Five Nights at Freddy's references I could find in other media, excluding things that are more official or exist in more of a fan game or fan made capacity. But the series is so prolific at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if I missed any. You guys are going to have to let me know. Presumably, things are going to keep coming out after this video. If people help keep me up to date with those, I can pin a post at the top of the comments and add those as they come up. And hey, if we accumulate dozens more, then I could make a part two video. Thank you to all the patrons of the channel, your support means the world. I don't really do Patreon exclusive content, it really is just a tip jar. So please only consider giving if you feel you have the means. I don't want anyone to feel pressured into that. And hey, if my brief mention of Riddle School got you thinking about that series, maybe got that nostalgic part of your brain going, I'll include my video on the history of the full Riddle School series in the end cards here. Go check it out. Here's a couple quick questions for you. What was your favorite reference? Were there any of these that you hadn't heard of before? And in what game, movie, or anything else would you be most excited to see a Five Nights reference in? Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.